Website designed for the explicit purpose of sexually exploiting children. There are fewer evils greater on earth than the abuse and exploitation of innocent children. What you're about to see here is nothing short of truly disturbing. You can never unknow, but we think you need to know because it's the truth. So let's ditch politics here for a second, okay? Everyone loves to talk about common ground. All right, let me throw this one at you here. If we don't agree on the following statement, there can never be hope of finding common ground. There are fewer evils greater on earth than the abuse and exploitation of innocent children. I can't think of anything, can you? Now the worst part of that is that it happens all the time. Even worse than that, and what we're about to show you today with receipts, is that often the perpetrators of this greatest of evils can be some of the most powerful and well-connected figures in the world. Now, if there's one bright spot here, it's that people are, are now willing to talk about it, to expose it. Uh, you've seen this from the you know, Epstein story captivating the public's attention. Uh, all the way to the shocking, or I should say surprising, success of 2023's Sound of Freedom. But you come back to the same problem. How can you separate fact from fiction, conspiracy versus provable reality? And more importantly, what can you do about it? And that's what today is about. What you're about to see is the result of pouring through countless hours of data analysis through extensive background verification, due diligence, exhaustive research with double, triple checking, our investigative unit here, Mug Club Undercover, was able to connect a high level executive at one of the world's most powerful entities to a website designed for the explicit purpose of sexually exploiting children. Now the evil includes, but is not limited to, the production, distribution of child pornography, and the facilitation of sex with children themselves. Does that sound too crazy to be true? Then you haven't been paying attention. So it's a good thing that we have the receipts. Now, I wanna let you know, this isn't a trigger warning. This is just a warning. What you're about to see, hear, read, is nothing short of truly disturbing. The kind of thing that you can never unsee, you can never unknow. But we think you need to know, because it's the truth. There's been a, a tip that has associated her with a, a rapey website. Yeah. And what is the newsworthy angle of her it, It's hero121 at mail.com. Okay, that is not her email address. It has never been her email address. The allegation that that is any way associated with her is absolutely false. I am telling you, the allegation that my client has anything to do with a child exploitation or rapey.xu is false and defamatory, and I am advising you in the strongest possible terms not to publish such a thing. On May 11, 2023, the Department of Justice issued a press release regarding four men who were sentenced for engaging in a child exploitation enterprise. The child exploitation enterprise being Rapey.su, an open web platform operated by the late convicted felon Nathan Larson. Members of this website would share media of pedophilia, child rape, and even tried to arrange in-person meetups. Nathan Larson died in jail back in October of 2022 and with the DOJ's subsequent sentencing of multiple individuals for their activity on the website, it is clear efforts are underway to bring the users of this website to justice. Now, it can be difficult for good people to imagine the kind of evil these forums and communities attract. One egregious example of the kinds of criminal activity taking place on the website was revealed in the probable cause affidavit for the arrest of then 22-year-old rapey user, Ashley Kolhoff. 
The affidavit describes in disturbing detail images produced and shared by Kohlhoff. These were images of an infant girl posed, being touched, and violated in a sexual manner. The summary of evidence against Kohlhoff led to a raid on her home where she was found with the infant from the photographs and the infant's father. Kohlhoff currently faces the mandatory minimum of 15 years in prison for the production of child pornography. In 2023, cybersecurity professional Ryan Montgomery went public and discussed how he obtained user data from Nathan Larson's network. In this case, rapey.su, a website constantly on the move, having switched domains from rapey.co to rapey.to, and so on. The data obtained by Montgomery revealed over 7,000 email addresses of individuals who became members of rapey.su. It's important to note that the application process contained questions such as, if a man wants to rape his three-year-old daughter up every hole while she's crying and screaming, do you have a problem with that? To be clear, the only way for these thousands of users to have their email show up in the database, they or someone who breached their email account had to answer this question. Once on the forum, users posted child sexual abuse material. Moderators chimed in and made it clear users must share their own child pornography in a direct message with a moderator in order to access private sections of their site, as well as to receive an invitation to their private Telegram channel. Within the data obtained by Ryan Montgomery, we found a user account created with the email address hero121 at mail.com connected to the username Jackie222. It is worth noting that when investigating email addresses, they often connect to multiple individuals. However, this email address repeatedly linked back to the one name. More than 10 identity verification services strongly suggest that this email is only associated with one possible name, BlackRock Managing Director Abigail Gold Geller. According to an article in the New York Times from November 15, 2015 titled, Abigail Gold, Eric Geller, Abigail Gold and Eric Geller were married that Saturday evening on November 14, 2015 at the Pierre Hotel in New York. The article states Abigail's father, James Gold, retired as a partner and the managing director for mergers and acquisitions at Lazard, the investment bank in New York. And according to his LinkedIn, he was a senior advisor for Sawaya Partners, an investment bank in New York until 2020. Abigail's husband, Eric Geller, is a senior vice president of Jefferies, an investment bank in New York, and since 2018 has become managing director of Jefferies. He was previously a vice president of Citigroup from 2007 to 2012. Abigail's father-in-law is Jeffrey Geller, who has been a managing director of the asset management branch of J.P. Morgan Chase in New York for the past 18 years. The same J.P. Morgan Chase that had to pay $290 million to Jeffrey Epstein's victims after they continued to do business with the convicted pedophile. To be clear, there is no direct connection between Abigail Gold Geller's prestigious family and the data obtained by hacker Ryan Montgomery. IDICore.com has a single result when typing the email hero121 at mail.com into their reverse email search. That one result is an Abigail G. Geller. IDICore.com also states that the email has been valid since June 6th of 2018. Instantcheckmate.com also states that hero121 at mail.com allegedly belongs to an Abigail Gellard and also states that the email has been valid since June 6th of 2018. Thatsthem.com states that hero121 at mail.com belongs to an Abigail Gold and states it was last updated four years ago. A background report on Abigail Geller obtained on truthfinder.com lists hero121 at mail.com as a possible email of hers as well. Benverified.com states that Hero121 at Mail.com only has one potential owner, that potential owner allegedly being Abigail Gold Geller, and that the email has apparently been valid since June 6, 2018. When Abigail Gold Geller is searched on whitepages.com, Hero121 at Mail.com comes up as one of her emails. On checkpeople.com, when searching Abigail Gold, Hero121 at Mail.com pops up again. Spokio.com also states that Hero121 at Mail.com belongs to an Abigail S. Gold and that the email was found in one data source five years ago. Which is unusual given on Thatsthem.com you can click the tab which reads Run Background Search and that directs you to Spokio's website. Yet as previously stated, Thatsthem.com says last updated four years ago and Spokio says it was connected to an Abigail as far back as five years ago. Socialcatfish.com also states Hero121 at Mail.com belongs to an Abigail Gold, which also states has been valid since June 6, 2018 and last confirmed the same day. 
and Intellius.com also links hero121 at mail.com to an Abigail Gold Geller. However, this is the only background report which states the email was valid since October 3, 2010. To further corroborate our research, we decided to work with a private investigator to see if they would come up with a different conclusion. Using DelvePoint, a program that licensed private investigators use for their investigations, our private investigator obtained this comprehensive report, which contains a wealth of information regarding an Abigail S. Gold, which appears corroborated by these other background checks, including the fact that Hero121 at Mail.com was allegedly an email of Abigail Gold. This private investigator was even able to take it a step further using DelvePoint, showing the addresses the email was used at. From these findings, it shows Hero121 at Mail.com was used two separate times by a person named Abigail Gold, as well as Gold Abigail, at a property she owns in New York City, lending more credibility that this could be Abigail's email and she was the one using it. Unfortunately, the report does not indicate when she used this email and for what purpose. To recap, four of these background checks say Hero121 at Mail.com has been valid since June 6, 2018. One of these background checks says four years ago, and another says it was sourced five years ago. And another background check indicates it was valid since October of 2010. However, what all 11 of these background checks strongly suggest is Hero121 at Mail.com does in fact belong to an Abigail Gold Geller. The inconsistencies in the information seem to indicate that these identity verification services source their data from different data providers. However, we do not know that for a fact. So we reached out to Bree Fernandez of Social Catfish Investigations to see if she would come up with a different conclusion. By sending her just the email hero121 at mail.com, she sent back a report indicating the email does belong to an Abigail Gold Geller. On June 26, 2023, hero121 at mail.com was deactivated, a very easy thing to do on mail.com. It's also important to note that the email was still deactivated as of September 13, 2023. Despite the overwhelming evidence that this email, hero121 at mail.com, which was found in the database of users from rapey.su, does belong to a person named Abigail Gaylor or Abigail Gold Geller, we still wanted to provide the opportunity to Abigail to explain herself and address these allegations given their severity, and it very well could have been someone else using her email. Hi, Abby. Again, do you did you read my text? No. What? Um, I'm. You a, tell me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just in the. What's your name? What? I'm. A, I'm an investigative journalist, and I have this tip that uh, is claiming that your email is associated with this rapey website, and I'm just trying to figure out like what, if this is bogus tip or. Um, I. You're you're a journalist from where? Mug Club Undercover. What is it? Mug Club Undercover. I run the tip line, and I, it's just my job to go through and, like, s figure out what's misinformation or bogus tips. Um, I just didn't, I wanted to, like, let you know if there's these claims going out again, around you. I didn't know if you're aware, if anybody's reached out to you, if, if it's uh, valid or not. I, I, it's not uncommon for, you know, things like the emails to get mixed up, so... What's your last name? I'm sorry. Can I give you a call right back? Is this your direct line? Yeah, that's, yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Um, I mean, we could, I, I'm just trying to figure out if this is a valid um, tip or if, if this is something that, if it's real or if you're aware of it okay, at all. I'll call you right back. Okay. Can I call you right back? Yeah, sure. One would think an innocent person would be very alarmed by being identified in this manner and wonder how their email address was found on a website such as rapey.su. Abigail Geller's lawyer, Jack Bauman, founder and managing partner of JFB Legal, had this to say regarding the allegations. I understand that you've asked certain questions about uh, certain allegations. Those allegations are false. They can be proven false. I'm telling you, you should not publish any such allegations. They are false. They are defamatory. I was expecting her to call me back. She said she was going to call me back. Cause, you know, I was just trying to give her a heads up. Um, but, I mean, it's just kind of alarming for a journalist to get a call. I don't normally get a call from an attorney right away. It's a little weird. Can you see where I'm coming from? Well, I mean, not 
not really when you're things like this, which are very, very defamatory and false. So, you know, I'm just representing the client. So um, there's been a, a tip that has uh, associated her with a, um, a rapey website. Yeah. And what is the newsworthy angle of course? Any individual who became a member of this website is worthy of investigation, especially a managing director of one of the largest financial firms in history. It is our contention that identifying people who joined this website, especially those with the intent to harm children, is a newsworthy story. Uh, are you familiar with the site, sir? With the site? Let me be very clear. Ms. Geller is not involved in rape. She is not involved in any improper sexual activity. And any allegation that she is is false and defamatory and will be taken extremely seriously. Okay, it can't be clear. Help me understand this. So if her email was associated with the, the site, how, how, how can you prove that she's not been associated with it? I can, I will, there is an explanation. I can explain it and I will explain it in writing when you give me your email address that you have promised to do. Please give it to me. Sure, I, I look forward to the explanation why her email is associated with that site. Following these phone calls, Jack Bauman sent us a letter stating the following. As can easily be verified online, email addresses supposedly associated with pornography websites are frequently falsely linked to numerous different individuals. This statement is irrelevant as no individuals other than Abigail Gold Geller appear to be associated in any of the identity verification services. Indeed, you are the second news organization to receive this malicious defamatory tip. When presented with Ms. Geller's unequivocal denial, the first organization immediately dropped the story. I demand that you and any organizations you are associated with do the same. So this is not the first time these allegations have been brought to Abigail's and Bauman's attention. He goes on. To reiterate, it would grievously misrepresent Ms. Geller to associate her with a rapey website or anything similar. This statement is unusual as he claims the information is false, but doesn't acknowledge the name of the website. So either he knows but refuses to address it, or he doesn't know, thus showing he doesn't know whether or not the information is false. As a private individual, Ms. Geller is entitled to the full protection of New York law, including in particular defamation law. Any statement asserting or implying that she is associated with rape, pornography, or sexual misconduct would cause her and her family immense personal and professional injury and emotional distress. Any such publication would amount to malicious and intentional defamation and constitute a grossly irresponsible violation of standards of information gathering and dissemination. It would also expose you and any other individual or organization involved to liability for compensatory and punitive damages and other relief. While this letter denies the allegations, it provides no explanation as to how or why this information is false and threatens to sue if the information is published. We felt this explanation wasn't satisfactory, so we decided to call him back the following day. It's hero121 at mail.com. Okay, that is not her email address. It has never been her email address. The allegation that that is any way associated with her is absolutely false. Now, I got just... Help me out here. How can you say that's clearly not her email address, though? How do you know that? You just found out what the email address is, right? You could go register for that email address today on Mail.com. It is not her email address. A lot of these research sites, so that's what's confirming this information, right? And it's coming on a lot of different websites, so that's what prompted, you know, us to follow up. All we're doing is asking some questions, so you don't even have the information. You're giving me answers to things, and it, it, it's things just aren't lining up right now. You know. I'm telling you, the allegation that my client has anything to do with a child exploitation or rapey.xu is false and defamatory, and I am advising you in the strongest possible terms not to publish such a thing, okay? It's uh, false. I, I do understand you're telling me it's false, but you haven't provided me any information as to why it's false. And what you, if you had done basic diligence, sir, what you would know is those websites are inaccurate. Indeed, many of them say that they're inaccurate. This is a private citizen. She has no public persona. This is extremely reckless. 
send me the information that you believe. That's, that's part of the problem now, Jack, is private citizens are on this website exploiting children. Yes. That's a problem, right? And I don't care. I don't care who she works for. I don't care. I see that's part of this this year. What I what I care about. Who did she Who did she work for? You know. Uh, she works for BlackRock. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but that's uh, irrelevant to what you're doing. Uh, it doesn't matter where you work. It matters what you do. If she's on a child exploitation website, doing the things that happen on that website, which I have seen, it, it's a problem. So you know, I'm not threatening anybody. I'm doing my job as a journalist. You know, and, that, and that's it, really. Listen to me. You keep saying she is doing. It is not her. Can I be any more clear? If you allege that it is her, you will be sued. Following this phone call, Bauman sent an additional email to us stating the following. You claim to have documentation supporting scurrilous allegations against my client, Abigail Geller. We have now twice demanded in my letter last night and in our call that you provide us with copies of all your documentation, but nothing has been forthcoming. The only supposed substantiation for these allegations you have identified are 1. An email address called hero121 at mail.com is associated with the website RapeyXU, which you described as containing child exploitative material. 2. Unnamed sources and unspecified documentation somehow link Miss Geller to hero121 at mail.com email address. Here, Bauman doesn't even get the name of the website correct, and it's a matter of fact that the real website, rapey.su, did contain child exploitative material. He goes on. Miss Geller unequivocally and in the strongest possible terms denies, one, ever being associated with hero121 at mail.com email address, two, ever having anything to do with rapey.xu website, and three, any involvement in any form of child exploitation. You stated in our conversation that the hero121 at mail.com email address is currently unassigned, which itself calls into serious question the allegations against Ms. Geller. We have now learned that the email has been assigned to the name of an individual who has nothing to do with Ms. Geller, and furthermore, that there are at least two dozen other individuals who have been separately linked with that email. That completely disproves the anonymous allegations you have received. There's a lot to unpack here. For starters, the identity verification services we previously cited linked hero121 at mail.com only to a person named Abigail Geller. The only reason this email has been made known is because it was found on rapey.su, which he still can't get correct. Amazingly, another person suddenly owns this very obscure email immediately following the phone call we had with Bauman. You could go register for that email address today on mail.com. It is not her email address. The chances of that happening randomly are astronomically unlikely. Lastly, there are not at least two dozen other individuals who have been separately linked with that email. Every single background check points to this email belonging to a person named Abigail Gold or Abigail Gold Geller. Unless he knows something we don't, this is a false statement. As you surely know, services such as ScopeNow and Accurant warn users not to rely on any data that is not independently verified. For example, Accurant states, the public records and commercially available data sources used on reports have errors. Data is sometimes entered poorly, processed incorrectly, and generally not free from defects. This system should not be relied upon as definitively accurate. Before relying on any data this system supplies, it should be independently verified. In addition, information from websites like rapey.xu that do not verify emails is itself untrustworthy. It is true that all these verification services aren't always 100% accurate. However, based on the Project Veritas release with one of the individuals from the website who admitted to using it, often enough these verification services are accurate. And given the fact that Bauman ordered them not to publish anything, it's safe to say they met Abigail the same way they met the man from that initial release. Although he continues to get the name of the website wrong, the rapey websites, whether it be .co, .to, or .su, all verified the user's emails, as provided by an individual who claims to have investigated this website while it was live. Let me be as clear as possible. Any allegation that Miss Geller is associated with Hero121 at mail.com, with rapey.xu, or involved in any way with child exploitation is false and libelous. Given Miss Geller's explicit rejection of these allegations, your failure to substantiate these claims, let alone provide documentation, the anonymity of your supposed source, the information we have provided, and the unquestionable fact that open source information linking emails to individuals is unreliable, 
Any such publication would be an intentional and malicious falsehood subjecting you and any person or organization acting in concert with you to compensatory and punitive damages and other sanctions. If you proceed, we will pursue all available legal remedies against those individuals and entities. I reiterate the demand in my letter that you immediately provide the supposed documentation or other material you claim to have supporting any allegations against Ms. Geller and that you, your organization, and its personnel preserve all documents relating to her in any way. Bauman continues to threaten us with litigation and relentlessly states how the allegations are false. 11 background checks which contain a ton of additional accurate information, including other emails, the phone number used to call her in the first place, and addresses all show this email belongs to her. So why would all of that information be right, but hero121 at mail.com is not correct? As previously shown, it consistently comes up as belonging to a person named Abigail Gold Geller. If these allegations were as false as Bauman claims them to be, why would Abigail refuse to acknowledge the email? Why would Bauman claim the information is false, yet consistently spell the name of the website we found the email on incorrectly? And even more concerning, who signed up for this very specific email address on this obscure email service provider following the end of the phone call on the morning of September 28, 2023, before Bauman sent the letter to us that same evening? Bauman himself admitted that you can go on today and sign up for that email address. You could go register for that email address today on Mail.com. It is not her email address. That same day, an individual not associated with Abigail registered Hero121 at Mail.com. If you check these identity verification services today, there are not two dozen individuals associated with Hero121 at Mail.com. Only an Abigail Gold Geller. How in the span of a couple of hours do they know the name of the individual who clearly just signed up for the website and has nothing to do with Abigail or this issue at hand? Clearly Abigail and her lawyer Jack Bauman vehemently deny that this email belongs to Abigail, so we cannot definitively say that it belongs to her. However, her lack of concern when the allegations were brought up, Bauman continuously labeling our information false without seeing it, Bauman's efforts to make excuses with lies including dozens of other people associated, and how quickly they knew that a new individual had registered the email hours after Bauman learned what the email is doesn't make them look very innocent. Our team has since reached out to the Department of Justice's Eastern District in Virginia, the same office that sentenced the four men for engaging in the child exploitation enterprise, rapey.su. We provided both the username Jackie222 and the email hero121 at mail.com to better assist their ongoing investigation. The data provided to us is limited in scope because of the nature of the material that was shared on the website. For that same reason, the archives that are available online are also very limited. So we hope that the resources that the DOJ has at their disposal will help us better understand what the account, Jackie222, was doing on the website, and if it was, in fact, Abigail Geller. But what do you think? Is Abigail Gold Geller, BlackRock executive, responsible for Hero121 at Mail.com ending up on rapey.su, or was she the victim of some sort of misunderstanding that caused the email to end up on the website? It's possible. But here's the thing. You shouldn't have to answer. The people who are paid to find these answers by your tax dollars have no interest in finding the answers. Our investigative unit reached out to the DOJ, presented some of our findings. In its response, the DOJ acknowledged our email, but has not followed through with any investigation of its own. But the double standard is what's not fine. Other former active members of this website are sitting in jail right now, including the founder of the site, by the way, who died in jail, because the DOJ knows that this is a serious problem. So why is Ms. Geller exempt from at least the same line of questioning, let alone consequences? And I think you know the answer. You know, when people talk about, we hear this term, the swamp or the establishment, you often think of elected officials, maybe your local representative or senators, uh, congressmen, women, Z's, people in positions of power who've been elected who maybe are greasing some palms and doing favors for other elected officials. But the swamp goes far beyond that. It includes people who are paid by your tax dollars who have never been voted into any 
position of authority. It's been granted to them. And these same people owe favors to those who do the granting, to the point that it becomes an incestuous relationship that is completely incongruent with the best interests of the people, of serving you, the people, of getting the truth to you, the people. Because it's often uncomfortable. It does come down to you versus them, sometimes. Now, the rapey community has survived uh, several domain hosting changes, from the CO to the TO to the SU, even after the DOJ shut down the latest SU iteration of the site. The community is very likely right now still active, and they've just moved on to an unknown domain. Something I want to note, everybody else passed on this story. We haven't. There's a very strong likelihood that we get sued for putting the story out in the public. Um, we understand this. Mug Club Undercover Unit understands this. But we're not going to stop. And we're only able to do this, to be clear, because of your support for Mug Club. None of this happens without your support. We are entirely funded by viewers like you. We don't say that like PBS and then collect tax dollars. And it doesn't make business sense. Without you, this information never comes to light. Also, if you work inside a government agency or if you work inside a place like BlackRock and you are willing to blow the whistle, we here at Loud Earth Crowder and our Mug Club Undercover Investigative Journalism Unit not only will work with you, not only want to help you, we are willing to go to jail to protect you as a source.